And our next speaker is uh, Dr. Daniel Webster. Um, Dr. Webster is the director of the John Hopkins Center for Gun Policy and Research um, and a Bloomberg professor of the American Health at the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Dan. Hi, good morning. Um, the policy I'm going to discuss today uh, addresses assault weapons and uh, large capacity magazines that I'll define in just a moment. Um, not surprising, the, the reason that this is part of this panel, why we're having this discussion, is that these are the type of weapons that are most commonly used in the most high profile uh, public mass shootings. Um, there's no category of gun deaths that is rising as rapidly as our those types of shootings, the public mass shootings, and invariably the, uh, those events with the highest casualty counts involve the use of an assault style rifle and uh, large capacity magazines. So let me, let me define uh, that uh, very specifically. Well, large capacity magazines are relatively straightforward to define, at least in terms of policy. Most uh, state policies that ban uh, I'll, I'll use the term LCMs for short, uh, define that as more than 10 rounds uh, of ammunition in the uh, ammunition feeding device or magazine. Assault weapons um, are defined as semi-automatic firearms that are able to accept these large capacity magazines and typically have one or more other features that are commonly uh, associated or, or, or more designed for military or criminal purposes. These may include pistol grips, folding stocks, barrel shrouds, other types of, uh, of characteristics that sort of facilitate a large, uh, a very rapid fire of, uh, of the gun in a very short period of time. Um, so the policies uh, in, in question have uh, banned the sale um, and manufacture of these um, uh, firearms. And in, uh, for the period 1994 to 2004, we had a federal ban of assault-style weapons and LCMs. Several states also regulate or, or ban um, these uh, types of weapons. Uh, seven states and the District of Columbia um, have, I'm not advancing my slides, I apologize, um, ban um, uh, assault weapons and large capacity magazines. Uh, and two states, um, Colorado and Vermont, just uh, restrict large capacity magazines. Now, in some of these instances, they also address pre-banned or the grandfathered types of, of guns. Um, the District of Columbia prohibits uh, assault weapons altogether. Two states limit where you can have them and, and require licensing of those firearms. What do we know first about the use of these types of weapons in crime? Well, shockingly, um, none of our systems truly uh, track the use of these types of firearms in violent crime in the United States. What we have to go on is the um, uh, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms gun trace data. We know that 5% um, of guns traced to crime uh, recovered by law enforcement are categorized as assault weapons. If you look at the weapons used in uh, instances when law enforcement officers are shot and killed in the line of duty, those represent 13% of, uh, of those cases have assault weapons. And um, the, the other estimates, and, and much of this research, I should acknowledge Christopher Coper, uh, who's done some of the uh, landmark research uh, on the use of these weapons in crime, uh, find that they're used um, in uh, anywhere from 10 to 36 percent of fatal mass shootings. Now, what about large capacity magazines? Again, the only thing we have to go on now is uh, the f handful of cities that uh, track such uh, things, and from those cities, we see 22 to 36 percent of firearms recovered uh, by law enforcement involve a, a large capacity magazine. And if you look at their use in fatal mass shootings, um, large capacity magazines have, um, uh, involved in um, 20 to 67 percent 
of these uh, fatal mass shootings. And, and the reason for these ranges is in this study is defined uh, based on the, the victim count or the circumstances, how restrictive they are in their studies. Now, Dr. Coper has a paper coming out that um, compares the uh, fatalities and, and injuries in instances of fatal mass shootings with and without these types of weapons. What he finds is that um, fatal mass shootings with LCMs have uh, 60 to 67 percent higher fatality counts and about two to three times the number of non-fatal wounding uh, accounts in fatal mass shootings. In a study that uh, looked at uh, what we call active shooter scenarios, these are cases in which people come into a crowd of people to, to try to um, shoot uh, large numbers of people, um, and used a number, looked at a number of factors that may play into the casualty counts. Uh, in that research, they estimate that um, having a large capacity magazine roughly doubled um, the, uh, uh, and I'm sorry, it's, it was a semi-automatic gun, usually assault-style rifle with an LCM that doubled fatality counts and increased non-fatal woundings 81%. Now, there have been a very limited number of studies that have des been designed to look at very specific gun laws and their association with fatal mass shootings. And, and I should say that Dr. Coper also looked at the federal assault weapons ban and found no association with overall rates of, of violent crime, uh, which should not be surprising since uh, really the issue is principally in fatal mass shootings. Um, but these studies have, have had mixed results and have a variety of limitations. One study um, just looked at FBI data and, and um, focused exclusively on the federal um, and state assault weapons bans, but not other uh, types of gun laws, and found no evidence of protective effects. Another study, uh, conversely, published earlier this year, uh, looked at fatal mass shootings and found the opposite conclusion, estimate that as many as 70% reduction might be attributable to the federal assault weapons ban. This also had important limitations on their uh, data that they used and, and definitions of, basically they excluded um, a very large number of fatal mass shootings in this study. And yet in another study also um, uh, published in 2015 looked exclusively, again, only at assault weapon bans and did not look at other state laws that estimate, uh, the estimate from that study suggested a protective effect. So you have mixed uh, findings um, across these studies, but they have very important limitations. That motivated our team at uh, Johns Hopkins to uh, do a new study looking at the association between these firearm policies and uh, fatal mass shootings. And I'll summarize our findings here. Um, so first of all, we identified over 600 um, fatal mass shootings from 1985 to 2017. Um, interestingly, we identified some of the m biggest mass shootings that have uh, driven policy discussions were actually excluded from the FBI system. That's a separate discussion. Um, what we found, uh, and, and what we do, we comprehensive look at a number of state laws and a number of, of uh, covariates that are associated or, or theoretically connected to fatal mass shootings in our study. We found no association between, uh, no statistically significant association between the federal assault weapon ban and this outcome, nor did we find a statistically significant effect for state bans of assault weapons. Now, the point estimate did suggest a 29% uh, lower rate associated with um, those state bans of assault weapons, but not statistically significant. We think a, a reason that we're not seeing this impact from the federal and state laws is that there are many different uh, alternatives and uh, if, uh, if these types of weapons are banned for grandfathered guns, for guns coming from other states, and other ways to basically get around uh, these, these laws. But we found very different and encouraging effects when we looked at restrictions on large capacity magazines. Um, our estimate was that uh, these laws that uh, ban large capacity magazines are associated with a 49% lower rate of fatal mass shootings. 
And if you look at the, uh, this on a per capita basis, number of fatalities from fatal mass shootings, we see a 70% lower rate of um, individuals killed in these shootings associated with bans of large capacity magazines. Now, we looked at a number of different uh, ways to sort of look at the sensitivity of our findings to different um, model uh, assumptions and different, uh, we even did some studies where we excluded certain uh, mass shootings uh, like the Aurora shooting in Colorado and Newtown that soon afterwards led to a large capacity magazine restriction and, and we sort of set those observations aside to see if uh, our results uh, were consistent, and largely they were. The one exception is if you assume that these laws have a gradual impact rather than a more immediate impact, our estimates are lower uh, um, but and not statistically significant. So um, most of our tests are, are highly robust to a variety of model assumptions. So this leads to um, what I think are some clear policy recommendations relevant to these questions um, that are so important to fatal mass shootings. I think very clearly uh, the evidence indicates that we should uh, ban both the sale and possession of large capacity magazines, that this will reduce the number of fatalities quite substantially. Um, we might consider to ha having uh, stiff penalties for possession of these firearms if we want to take this seriously. And um, think carefully about ways that we um, recover or, or encourage people to get rid of any large capacity magazine that they might possess when a ban goes into effect. The more uh, challenging question really is, what do we do about assault uh, weapons? Um, I believe the available evidence right now suggests that, yes, they are uh, very clearly highly involved in these fatal mass shootings. I would say there's not a justifiable reason for civilians to have um, military-style weapons like assault weapons. But right now, we're not seeing the, the policy solutions that are being proposed are not having the effect. I, uh, I believe that a very prudent uh, policy recommendation would be that we need to highly regulate these types of firearms, require licensing, as Dr. Kafasi told us, the many benefits of, of that. And I should say that um, the other policy most strongly associated with reductions in fatal mass shootings was licensing for firearm purchasers. Um, uh, I believe a 44% re statistically significant reduction associated uh, for fatal mass shootings connected to purchaser licensing. So we need to tightly regulate and restrict these types of firearms that are already available that are very challenging to address um, uh, in, a, in a practical way of how you restrict that type of firearm given how many that we already have. <clears throat> 